this point, we're going to talk about working on a team um, by using different branches. So there's a couple ways we could do this. Uh, if you'll notice down here in the lower right, um, we have, and I'll bring this up a little bit, you can see it. Uh, we have a <coughs> master branch, so if we click on that in our in Atom, we can make new branches right from Atom. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I primarily wanted to show people how to use the GitHub desktop app, because you might be using Dreamweaver to do your HTML and CSS and JavaScript. You might be using, uh, you know, WebStorm, um, Sublime. And I just want you to be able to use version control, use Git with any particular code editor or IDE that you happen to choose. So to make a new branch, so let's say I got invited to this repo, I'm a team member, I'm not the owner of the branch, and I want to make some changes, but I don't want to, to, to push those changes onto the master branch. I just want it to be my own uh, version of the code that somebody else or I can later merge into the master branch. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new branch by clicking on the drop down and then new. I'm going to give it my own name and I'm going to create it. Alright, so now let's make a change to the code. Let's make a uh, um, let's see something interesting so uh, just a real quick refresher on um, or explanation I guess what's going on in this HTML uh, let me just describe the, the, the uh, code as the browser sees it so the browser gets all this information in the head and uh, it says hey you know this is my this is the title so the title is not going to be seen um, not going to be seen by uh, the uh, user that's looking at your code through the browser all this stuff in the head is uh, just handled by the browser behind the scenes um, and it, uh, these are the important scripts here so what I'm doing is I'm going to this location where Google uh, maintains an Ajax jQuery uh, JavaScript file and this is necessary for Bootstrap to run. Then I'm going here to get the latest jQuery from um, jQuery.com, from code.jQuery.com and then I'm using a CDN, so a relative link basically to go get Bootstrap, JavaScript, and Bootstrap CSS uh, with key integrity. Finally, I'm going to my own local folder where this is saved and getting my style sheet, which is this file over here, style.css. And so together, these Bootstrap, JavaScript, and CSS classes, and my own style sheet class, are going to allow me to do things like, hey, I want a container class, I want it to be a row, and um, I want it to be have a, a heading with center text that's uppercase that says our team. And the reason that I can call these classes because I haven't made them in my CSS file over here. You'll notice that there are no... So uh, class is declared over here in HTML with this class equals and then the quotation marks. And then CSS, the class is defined with this dot, right? That's how we define a class. Um, you'll notice that there's no container class defined over in my CSS, just some dot team member classes. Um, and uh, that's because this is a bootstrap class. Uh, these are these are bootstrap classes right here that we get by linking to bootstrap JavaScript and CSS above he, up here. 
okay? H3 should look familiar. That's just normal H3. And there's the R team uh, text. And then you want half text, and it's going to be It's Only Me. Uh, and so here we're actually going to start calling our classes team member, team image, uh, image circle. So those are defined over here. So we have a, some body stylings in our CSS, and then we have, um, if we scroll down, here's our dot team member class definitions. So team member and team image are getting uh, at the same time some some properties. So um, let's say we wanted to make these images. I mean, here's what they look like right now, right? What if I wanted to make them like circles? So to do that, I'm going to pull in the border, or el ellipses, I guess. So I can pull in the border radius by 50% on every side, and I'll get ellipses uh, for these images. So let's just make that change. So there's the class that is defining over here in HTML. Um, what's going to happen to this image source. The image source, by the way, is not an image on my local computer. I'm actually going to my website, to my images folder, and grabbing an image of me online. Um, and the browser does that for me. But I could download this image and just have it in the folder, and then I would reference it uh, just like this. Right? So if I had a Daniel JPEG inside of this local folder here, um, and I had a JPEG just called Daniel, uh, I would reference it like that. But I don't, so I'm just going to go online and grab it from my website. And. Uh, Okay, so what's going to happen to this image source? I want to pull in the uh, border radius. Um, let's say 50%, so it just becomes an, ellip an ellipse. And I also want to do that up, let's see, down here. is duplicate code, isn't it? Dot team member, comma, dot team member. Yeah, so let's just get rid of that. Um, and let's put that there as well. Actually, I'm not sure that will even be necessary. So let's comment that out real quick and see if it is. I think, yeah, OK, so we've already done the trick. Uh, this group class definition, so I don't actually need to do it there as well. So a couple things to notice, um, if we look here, there's a little red line, it's kind of hard to see, that shows that something was deleted, and over here there's a green line that shows that something was added. This is Adam telling us that we added something to our um, style.css sheet uh, that GitHub hasn't tracked yet. So I can, right from Adam, uh, push this code up. So I'm going to go actually uh, to view and I'm going to toggle the GitHub tab. So now we can see we have this unstaged change and it's saying, hey, you got rid of this duplicate code and you added this border radius code. So um, I could commit right from here if I wanted to uh, this code and then push it to this branch. And you'll notice actually my branch has changed down here. Um, and that's the preferred workflow when you're um, working with code because you don't want to always be switching back to the GitHub desktop app. But like I said, for now, I want to do everything using GitHub Desktop so that no matter what IDE you're using, even if you're not using Atom, you'll have um, the ability to do this. So I'm going to say 
made the picture. Wow, the team member pictures ellipses. Ellipses used border radius. Um, property and style sheet. And you see that we <coughs> when we commit now we're gonna commit to a branch to commit to Daniel. That is my current branch. I'm not on master. So let's commit it. Commit that change. And then let's um, publish this branch. I'm pushing it to origin, but I'm not overriding master. Okay, so this is what the code looks like now on my computer. Um, if we go over to GitHub, and we go to GitHub Tutorial and refresh, you'll see, while well, we had one branch and six commits, now, whenever this finishes loading, oh, we're still pushing to origin. So it may take a little while. But what we'll see when it finishes pushing to origin is that we have um, seven commits and two branches now. And what we're going to talk about next uh, is what to do when you have a couple team members and they each have their own branch and their code conflicts and you want to merge them together um, and it's actually easier than you think uh, all it's gonna do is say here's where the conflict is resolve it and then once it's resolved so you change the code so the conflict goes away once it's resolved, you'll commit it to the branch that you want to be merging into, so it'll be master. And then um, that's it. And then uh, push it up to your repo to origin. Um, so I'm on branch master. And if we go now over to uh, GitHub tutorial, we have a six commits, one branch. Let's refresh it. Um, and you'll see we have a recently pushed branch and now we have the ability to switch between uh, the Daniel branch and the master branch and you can see the Daniel branch has some changes that are one commit ahead of master okay so if we go back to master and we can see um, we click on index.html, uh, oh sorry, if we click on cs.html, sorry, <laughs> on style.css, um, we can see that uh, we still have this duplicate code here and we don't have our border positions set to 50%. So we won't see these changes in the master code yet. But if we switch over to Daniel and look at that same file, we can see that we now have this 50% here and the duplicate code is removed. Okay. So Let's make one more branch. Um, and it's going to say, hey, do you want to create this branch based on Daniel's branch, the currently checked out one, or the master branch? So let's pick master because we don't necessarily want the changes that the other team member has done. So now in the Bob branch, let's make like an evil change that we don't really want. Bob is evil in this tutorial. <laughs> All right, so now you'll see I'm over on my Bob branch. Um, and for this change, I'm going to use the um, <coughs> the Adam, only Adam, just to show you that workflow, which is a little bit better than switching back and forth to GitHub. But again, it's you know relative to only using Adam. So we have uh, no unstaged. So let's go over to index. And let's just totally break the code by um, deleting 
our bootstrap links. So you can just see what this looks like. I'm just going to delete those. And then you'll see that we have this red indicating that there's been a deletion in the code. And this is turned green to indicate that we have a change not registered on GitHub. So there's our un unchanged stage. If we click on it, we can see exactly what I did. Yeah. So now um, if we put a commit message like evil Bob making Daniel's life hard. Um, and we stage it. So I stage the code. And, uh, and now I commit it. Um, Now if we switch over, so I haven't pushed it to origin yet, so if we switch over to GitHub though, you'll see I have no changes anymore, because I've uh, committed those. So we can either publish here, or we can publish from here. Um, so I'm going to switch over and, sticking with my main theme of the tutorial, publish from the GitHub desktop app. So now if we go... Uh, first of all, we can see on Bob's branch what the code happens to it, right? So now we just have these images. We still have some responsive uh, CSS going from the file, the custom CSS file, my style.css that it's linking to, but all the bootstrap is broken, so we won't get um, nice, you know, resized columns anymore because it doesn't know what those are. So if we hit Control Shift I, we can pull up our Pro Tools and uh, in Console in Elements, you can see uh, we just have, you know, while we still have all these divs, row, container, they're not doing anything anymore because we haven't linked the Bootstrap in here. We only have a link to style.css. <clears throat> All right, so that's on Bob's branch. Now, let's say I wanted to switch back to the master branch or to some other branch. I can just go, you know, and go over to Daniel's branch again and look at the code. And now we've got Daniel's change, but also Bob's change right um, locally because well, those are both stage changes all right so uh, what I want to do now is you'll see and at the github tutorial we still haven't published that Bob branch so we're gonna do that with the bad change so I'm gonna switch back to Bob and switch over to github so I'm on current branch Bob, and it's still pushing to origin. So um, we go to my repos, and we go to team tutorial. Let's see if that push has made it yet. Not yet. So we have two branches right now. We don't have Bob's branch yet. Okay, so <clears throat> now we are pushing to origin. There it goes. All right. So you'll see now that we have a Bob branch. And if we switch, if we uh, refresh, we will be able to switch, drop down to all our branches, okay? Um, and if we switch over to Bob, we can see that malicious change, evil Bob, with a descriptive uh, commit, and we can see, if we click on the change, exactly what got changed. 
so that we can undo it if we want to. Okay. But now let's um, merge both these branches back into the master branch and let's only save the changes um, that help us. So um, if we switch now to our default branch, um, so first of all let's merge the good changes in. And to do that, we are going to go to repo branch merge into current branch. And so it's going to say, which branch do you want to merge? And I want to merge. Oh, sorry. I want to be on the master branch. So switch over to that, and then branch, merge into current branch, or control shift M, we want to merge the Daniel branch into master, okay? So now, if we check origin, we switch over to um, and we switch over to our master branch. We can take a look at index.html and okay, that's good. We can take a look at our CSS and just make sure that we have, uh, so we still have that overflow code at this point because the merge hasn't been published and we have um, we still I mean that duplicate code we still have and we we don't have our border radius uh, set so we don't have these uh, cir circular ellipses for images yet so if we switch to github desktop and we push to origin that's gonna change um, all right, so now over here in uh, tutorial, you can see that on our master branch, if we go to style.css now, we in fact have those changes that were made from the Daniel branch. All right, so now let's switch over to Bob and I'm just going to artificially create uh, a big merge conflict here. Um, so we've, we've deleted that. Let's delete something else. Let's get rid of this. And let's just say like we want that, you know, maybe we don't like these ellipses here and we, we want them to be more uh, square, but we also want to, to have you know bootstrap and have all that nice formatting so we have one good change that Bob made and one bad change that he made he got rid of all the bootstrap links but he did fix those ugly ellipses that Daniel made so um, if we go over now into github you can see that that change was made that's our good change and let's just do made a good change don't erase It's getting rid of those ellipses due to border radius operating on rectangles. Images. All right, so we commit them to Bob and we'll push them to origin. So now Bob has some new changes on origin, some good changes and some bad changes. Um, so when we merge, we're going to see that his changes conflict with Daniel's changes. So right now we're going to go to branch and we're going to merge into current branch and we're going to select Bob's and it's going to 
freak out. It's going to say, hey, we found some merge conflicts. Please resolve these conflicts and commit the changes. 